Hello everyone, this is Julie with Craft with Julie and today I'm going to walk through the coloring of the gnomes for our virtual craft day that's coming up this Saturday. I apologize, this I promised to do this video yesterday, but I've been battling a little bit of a sore throat and a cough, so I'm hoping I can get through this video. Um, the cute kids shared their germs, so here we go. Um, so these are the gnomes that we'll be coloring for our projects on Saturday. The gnomes come from the Chillin' With My Gnomies stamp set and also has a thin cut option. They're super cute and so, <laughs> they're just so much fun. So um, I pretty much uh, colored the gnomes exactly the same for all the projects just to make it easier because our focus is the distressed oxides. So hopefully once we color one, you can color the rest of them. But the um, ink colors we used are, make sure I've grabbed them all. That would have been fun, huh? Um, lavender blend, citrus blend, brown gray, uh, fair skin, light green, and true blue. So those are the six that I used on all the different gnomes. Okay, so um, I brought my handy dandy official <laughs> marker chart. I've showed you guys this before, um, but when I get a new marker, I just do, I color the light, the medium, and the dark. And I just have this um, sitting on my desk, so when I go to color something, I can look and see um, what color will match the best really quickly instead of doing like a swatch every time. Um, it just saves time and you can see which colors um, you need. So I brought this to help me remember what shade we used. So tri-blend markers, if you haven't used them before, have three different tips. So there is a light, a mid, and a dark. So that's what these swatches are, the light, medium, and the dark. And I really loved the tri-blend markers. I haven't, I'm not a big color in person but since getting these they make it so easy and your your um, image looks really good without even like trying so I really love these um, I also used intense black to <clears throat> sorry to stamp all of the images intense black will not bleed when you're coloring in with marker or watercolors so I really highly recommend intense black if you don't already have it and then today I'm actually coloring on, I can't remember the name of this mat, all-purpose mat. Um, it just cleans off really nicely. We're going to be using this with the distressed oxide, so I just brought this mat in today. So I've already cut out um, all the images we need and um, stamped them. I'm just going to pull them out and I think, like I said, I colored them all the same. So once I show you how I colored one, you can go back and do the rest of them. Okay, so I think that's all the different ones. Now this summer right here came from <clears throat> August stamp of the month called 2D Fruity Summer. Um, I just thought this was super cute for our 6x6 layout, so we're going to color that in to match the watermelon. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, start with our uh, wizard. So he is right here. Let me bring him down a little closer. Let me grab a drink really fast. I'm hoping the throat clears up by <laughs> Saturday. Oh, the kids. They're always so um, helpful in sharing everything, right? Um, okay, so uh, in the instructions, which if you've per made a purchase on my website, you have been sent these instructions. If you did not receive them, please let me know. Um, but it gives you the coloring instructions right here. So you'll stamp with intense black ink and we're going to use the brown gray, the citrus, 
the lavender and the fair skin. So the lavender is for the hat and the robe, and the citrus is for the star, and the fair skin is for the skin. So I'm going to grab the lavender and I'm going to color in with the light. I always start with the light and then you can add more if you need to. And then you can also outline with um, the darker colors. Okay, I am left-handed, so if it looks funny, that's why. <laughs> and we're just going to color this in. Very carefully. with the light and then we can go back with the darker colors. Okay, I like to outline. I don't know if it's just a thing I learned in elementary. Okay, outline everything first and then color it in. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so you can tell it like was a very neat or anything. And then I'm going to do the light down here on his robe. doing like every other one. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Ooh. Okay. Now let's do the mid. Okay. So now let's do the medium. And I'm just going to color in some stripes with the medium. So I get those three different colors on his robe. Do this one. Okay, and then we're going to take the dark and I'm going to outline everything. You can see that light, it might be a little too light. So we can go back with the medium or do another layer of light on his hat. And then I'm gonna color these on his robe. Okay, <clears throat> and I think I'm gonna just do another layer of the light, just to blend that in a little bit. So there's just, so there's not such a stark contrast. So you can see how you can just layer them on top of each other. You can either even layer the <clears throat> light on the light. Okay. And the citrus blend, I use the dark for his star.
And then for his nose, I use the light fair skin. And then for his beard, <clears throat> I'm going to use a light brown gray and just outline his beard. Unless you want to color it in, you totally can. Or you can leave it white. <clears throat> Sorry about the throat. Just those little outlines right there. Okay. There's the wizard. <clears throat> okay. Now let's do Mr. Watermelon. For him, I use brown gray, light green, fair skin. Um, and that's it. <clears throat> okay, so for the light green, oops, I did his hat and the top of it in the, the light. I thought it matched the sage color really well. <clears throat> okay. And also the light green on his little outfit. And then I use the, <clears throat> the dark on the brim of the hat. And then the fair skin, the light one. the fair skin the dark for the watermelon And then I use the brown gray for his beard <clears throat> and his mustache. And I use the medium, I believe. Yeah.
<clears throat> All right, one more. That's this little guy. And <clears throat> I use true blue, citrus, light green, and fair skin. And I think that's it. <clears throat> okay. So the true blue, <clears throat> I use the dark. Hold on. For his shirt. <clears throat> I'm really sorry, guys. I'm going to rest my voice for Saturday. Isn't that a pretty color blue? His flip flops are also the true blue the dark and when I'm doing small little spots I just lightly kind of touch it and not press too hard to get that color just so it doesn't smush out His cute little toes. And then <clears throat> every other um, stripe on his hat. Again, they're kind of small, so I just lightly touch it down <clears throat> and then fill in. So then we have the yellow and the green and then the blue. Yellow, green, and blue. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, and then on his um, pinwheel, I use the medium and the light. Here's medium, and then here's the light. Do yellow next, and I use the dark for his sunglasses. Just lightly go around, <coughs> and then going to the, do the stripes, so the ones right after the blue. Okay, and then I'm going to use the same light and medium on the pinwheel. harder to tell on the yellow <clears throat> between the different shades. OK, 
Okay, let's grab our green. I'm gonna use the dark as well. On his shorts. And then on his hat. And then the same on the pinwheel. <clears throat> Use the medium. And the light. Okay, and then the brown gray we're going to use for his beard. I'm going to use the light. I'm just going to outline it. <clears throat> and then I'm going to use it for the stick right here. Slightly and it's so small, so you just have to kind of lightly lay some color down. And the light fair skin for his ears and nose hand and hands. And his toes. About the cute toes. Don't forget the top of his foot right there in his little flip flop. And then you also want to do this hand right here. All right. So you can go ahead and color the other. Um, gnomes this exact same way i think there's only one there's only one wizard but these other are exactly the same and then um <clears throat> this summer right here i did the dark green for the rhine And then I did the dark fair skin for the watermelon. And there you go. So that is all the coloring you need to do for our workshop coming up this Saturday. If you still need to order supplies, there is still time. You just go to juliescott.closetomyheart.com. I'll put a supply list in the description of the video so you know what we're using. It is quite a long list, um, so I would just recommend <clears throat> trying to use what you already have on hand. Um, if you haven't used distressed oxides before, at least get two colors because they're really fun to mix. And um, when you do order on my website, I will send you this instruction guide with the cutting and um, written instructions for free. And I say, oh, yeah, we're just used chilling with our gnomies as our stamp set. So come back and join me um, Saturday, starting at 9 a.m. Mountain Time, and I will show you all these different techniques of how I created these um, projects. So hope you have a wonderful week, and I will see you guys soon. Bye.